In this video, we're going to compute the expectation of a geometric random variable. And I haven't done this for maybe a year or so, so we're going to figure it out together. So a geometric random variable, right, so x is geometric, sometimes we write geom or just something to abbreviate geometric is with parameter alpha. That means that the PMF of x, uh, let's put k, probability that x equals k equals 1 minus alpha to the k minus 1 times alpha. Uh, so sometimes people, there's two different definitions of geometric random variables. One is to the kth power here, and this one is for the k minus 1, so when it's k minus 1, k takes the values, uh, let's see, if k is 1, then it's going to be, so it's 1, so it's positive integers. Right, because if it were 0, this one would be a negative 1, so th this is the case where it's positive integers. And this, the geometric random variable, is the, the probability of getting, so if you're flipping a coin, you flip it once, you flip it twice, it's uh, so you, so you get tails on the first flip, then you get you flip it again. Maybe you get tails, and then maybe you get third you get heads on the third flip. So the probability so geometric random variable is the number of times you need to flip it until you get heads. And you can remember that that this formula because if if alpha is the probability of getting heads on a single flip, then it's the probability of getting tails. So if k was say say 3, like in that, that example, then this would be, x1 would be 2, so we would get the probability of getting tails, probability of getting tails again, and then the probability of heads. So that's geometric. And the expectation of x is the sum over all the values it can take, so here k is going from 1 to infinity, of, oh, we're going to use k, so it's k times probability that x equals k. And so we'll plug this in, see what happens here. So k times 1 minus alpha to the k minus 1 times alpha. Well, alpha is a constant, so we can go ahead and let's pull that out. So we have alpha out front. And what should we do? Oh, okay, so, so here all right, so now I, I see where this is going. So <clears throat> let's also pull out a, uh, oh, no, no, this is good with the k minus 1 and the exponent. So I'm recognizing a, a series, a, a, um, a standard series that is used in analysis that you can get a closed form expression. So this is an infinite sum, but you can get a closed form expression for this infinite sum. And uh, so the series that I'm recognizing is let me this will be an aside here. So if we have the series, let's see, so for k from zero to infinity of x to the k, that equals let's see if I'm remembering this correctly, one over one minus x when x is uh, absolute value is, is strictly less than 1. Couldn't be 1 because then we would get, well, I mean, we would get infinity here, that's what it's, so, but this, this is going to apply, as I recall, when x is less than 1. So to verify this, so let's just check that I remember this correctly. If we multiply 1 over x on the left, then we get 1 times this thing. So we get this sum, 0 minus x times that. So now we start from 1, x to the k, and that should be equal to 1, if this is right. So maybe we could pull these two together. Let's see what happens if we do that. So this left-hand side so let's pull out the let's pull out the zero case here. So we get one 
plus the rest of this part, rest of this sum, 1 to infinity. Ah, uh, okay, this is looking promising now. And this one, I'll just leave the same. And these two are exactly the same, so they cancel. Boom, boom, and we get 1. Okay, so that's looking good. Looks like I remember this correctly, so that's a good sign. And, um, oh, but now we have yet another step because this isn't exactly, we can't exactly apply this this formula because we got this annoying K uh, out in the front here. So what are we going to do about that? Well, it turns out a beautiful little trick you can do with with this identity. So X to the K, if X was 1 minus alpha, uh, then forgetting about the sum for a minute, if we differentiated x to the k with respect to x, we would get k times x to the k minus 1. Right? And that looks a lot like this. So let's differentiate. So we'll do a further aside here. So let's differentiate this, this identity. This is a little bit heuristic because this is a, an infinite sum, and to be more precise, uh, I should justify being able to differentiate this. But, but, uh, but this this uh, this argument holds. Uh, I remember uh, that this argument holds more generally, and you know maybe we could make it more precise in another video. But let's just let's just do it heuristically for now. So if we dif differentiate both sides of this identity, then we get k. We'll just since the derivative is li is linear. It can move through the sum, at least heuristically, and so we get this k from 0 to infinity equals, and now we need to differentiate this guy, so what's that? So let's see, differentiate 1 minus x to the minus 1 minus 1 minus x to the minus 2, so that's minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. So we get minus 1 over 1 minus x. Oh, well, let me simplify that. Uh, no, we'll leave it like that for now, I guess. 1 minus x squared. Oh, okay, so this is, so this is good. Let's see. k is 0 here. When k is 0, the 0th term drops out, so we can rewrite this as the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the same thing. Something's weird here because we've got this minus sign. What's going on there? Is that right? It can't be right. Because that's positive. That's negative. Did I mess this up? Oh, of course. I forgot to differentiate. So it's the chain rule, right? I differentiated that thing, but then I forgot to multiply by the derivative of 1 minus x, so I needed another minus 1 out here, which I'm sure you noticed that I made this error. But And that cancels the minus 1, so we get plus 1 here and plus 1 there. Okay, so everything's good now. That looks much better. And that gives us a formula. Right, so... So we have that formula for the sum, for that kind of sum. It's 1 over 1 minus x squared. And right, so we can see it here. So we have this sum from 1 to infinity. We have this from 1 to infinity. So we just need to take x equal to 1 minus alpha. So let's go back to our sort of original problem here. So we have alpha times 1 over 1 minus, so we're going to, if we take x equal to 1 minus alpha, then we, let's see, so 1 minus alpha, and then it's 1 minus 1 cancels, and we just get alpha. So uh, that was alpha times this sum, which is 1 over 1 minus uh x squared, and that's alpha squared. Did I do that right? 
times alpha, so alpha squared. Yep, okay. So that cancels. We get 1 over alpha. So let's see. Is that so, so let me check. Let me check my my usual reference for these types of things to make sure we got that right. So I'm looking up in <clears throat> Grimm and Sturzacher has a very nice table at the back that has the bunch of different distributions, uh, different values, and the mean, the expected value for a geometric of this type is in fact 1 over alpha. So we got it. So it's 1 over alpha. All right. So that is the expected value of a geometric random variable.